In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take any 3D model and convert it into a blocky masterpiece using only Blender. Let's dive right in. Like all projects in Blender, the first thing we're going to do is delete the default cube by right-clicking and selecting Delete. Next, we'll go up to File and Import STL. Once our STL has been imported, we can pan around and take a look at it. And now it's time to apply the modifier. But before we do that, I wanna make a few copies of this model just in case we want to try a couple different things and edit it non-destructively. So I'm going to copy and paste, then select G for move on the Y axis and make a copy right over here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. So copy, paste, G, Y, and then slide it right over here. So now I have three models I can use to play around with a few different effects. So let's apply the block modifier to this middle model here. And we can go over to the properties tab on the right and come down to the wrench, which is the add modifier and we're gonna select Remesh. You'll see you have a few different options. We're gonna select Blocks, and that's it. Now we've applied the Block Modifier. By default, it looks a little bit too blocky, so we can increase the Octree Depth, which will increase the overall resolution. Stepping it up to six, I think this is a pretty good balance between blockiness and printability. I think if we go much higher than that, it's not really gonna look great on an FDM printer, and if we go much lower, it doesn't really look like the original model. So I think six is a pretty good balance, but for your model, you might wanna play around and experiment to find something that works for you. This looks pretty good, but before we go to print it on an FDM 3D printer, one of the things you may notice is the outer contour has a lot of these unsupported angles, and there's a lot of 90 degree overhangs. This might not look great on an FDM 3D printer. Typically, you want overhangs like this to be as self-supporting as possible. So one of the ways we can do that is by just rotating the orientation of the blocks by 45 degrees, which should give us a little bit more of a printable surface. Pay really close attention to this next part because it's actually surprisingly tricky. If you just rotate the model by selecting R, X, 45, and then do the same process as before and go to Remesh, Blocks, and adjust, you'll notice the blocks haven't actually changed in orientation. They're still sort of straight up and down. So one of the things you have to do as soon as you finish that rotation is go up to object, apply, all transforms. And this will apply that rotation to the model. So now we can come back down, select the model, go to remesh, blocks, and this looks pretty good to me. So now the blocks have changed in their orientation. So let's rotate it back to get a better look at it. So we'll do R, X, and this time we'll do negative 45. And all of those angles are now self-supporting. So we have these nice, clean, even lines here. And overall, this looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm actually really happy with this. I think this is gonna be a lot more printable than the version on the left. So now we can do File, Export, STL and we'll be ready for 3D printing. Taking a look at the two models side by side in our slicer software, you can see one of the biggest differences is a lot of these 90 degree angles that are pretty much completely unsupported have been addressed by rotating the cubes. So we should have a little bit more of a printable surface here. I think this is gonna look a little bit better. And in our slice preview, you can also see another side benefit is these top facing surfaces are probably not gonna look too great. They're gonna look a little bit visually different from the surface of the model, but by rotating the cubes, we're able to capture more of a complete contour. So this looks like some pretty natural curvature as opposed to here where it doesn't look quite as good. It looks a little bit lower fidelity. One thing to note though is we have, because we rotated the cubes, we have all of these sharp edges on the bottom, so we will need to go ahead and clean those up. That's pretty easy to do. We can actually just come down in Bruce Slicer in the cut feature and find that flat plane. And then we wanna make sure that we just wanna keep the top part so we don't necessarily need the bottom. And now we have a nice flat surface to print on. So going back into print preview, we can go all the way to the bottom and see that we start on a flat plane and then print up. Okay, let's print both of these out. I printed these models on the Anycubic Cobra Neo and despite the flat edges, the version with 90 degree angles coming off the blocks actually printed pretty well. And I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I also printed the other version where the blocks have all been rotated using a tricolor PLA and it really looks incredible. You can see how all of the cubes have been rotated 45 degrees, so they have this nice upward taper, like a chevron, and it works really well, so there isn't a whole lot of drooping or overhang, and it gives the model 
just a really cool appearance with that tricolor PLA. Now you have everything you need to make your own blocky model. I'm really excited to see what you come up with, and if you have more ideas for Blender videos, feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.